Hello guys, I'm just going to be chilling out, uh, answering a few questions that I've had. So I'm just going to call this Soul War Aquarium questions and answers. One second, I'll just mute my phone. Mm. Sorry about that, guys. Right. I'm planning on cleaning it out and reuse an old aquarium. How should I clean it out? In my opinion, the two best cleaners you can use in an old aquarium is fresh water and air. Yeah, that's right, fresh water and air. <clears throat> Give it a quick clean out, and let it air dry. You can flush your old tubes and lines with water with a garden hose. If you can manage to get outside, if you're not like in a build-up area. Most of the time, I just use paper towels to wipe it down inside the outside of the glass. Although if it's tough at deposits, I use a sponge. If you have a lot of salt or calcium buildup on your old pumps and other equipment, you can soak those in vinegar. Inexpensive, the inexpensive white vinegar you can find at the grocery store. After the vinegar, I would roughly like rinse it through thoroughly again with fresh water. After the fresh water bath, just let it air dry. Don't use any detergents whatsoever. Uh, next question is, do I need to run a protein skimmer on my reef tank? This one is a like personal debate. But my personal opinion is, protein skimmers are technically an option of a piece of equipment that'll work around the clock just to pull waste out of the water column. Waste that otherwise would pollute your tank and fuel algae problems and make them worse, stress the animals in your tank. They can do a lot of good, but they're not required. If you're just starting out and you can't afford it, I recommend adding one to a reef tank if you can afford it. If you can't afford it and don't want to spend the money right now and wait until you've fallen in love with your reef tank, you can obviously delay the purchase. If you choose not to run your tank with a protein skimmer, be extra diligent in testing your water, stay on top of your maintenance and make sure you keep up your pile, partial water changes. Do I need to use reverse osmosis unit to purify my water? I would say nine times out of ten, yes, but it will depend on obviously your water source. Uh, some water sources are uh, quite pure, like if you live on a well. Um, most of us obviously living in towns and stuff. You have phosphate, silicates, copper, other things that potentially have your tank. So I would say buy the Osmosis RODR unit. This is a very interesting question. Do I need to quarantine if I have a cleaner shrimp or a fish in my tank? Well, for me, one of the things I personally enjoy most about this hobby is sitting in my tank and watching the natural behaviors of the fish and invertebrates in my tank. One of the coolest behaviors I, I like to see is when the cleaner shrimp is uh, on top of the fish, picking off the parasites off the other fish. But my resounding answer is the short answer to that question would be yes. You would still need to quarantine whether you have a cleaner fish, like a neon goby, a cleaner wrasse, or cleaner shrimp species, like a scum cleaners. They're not going to be able to keep up with the tank parasites. Salt water ache for one. Or oh, whichever parasite you have in your tank. It's probably going to be able to reduce, reproduce a lot faster than a cleaner shrimp can clean. So over time, the population of parasites will just grow and overwhelm your fish tank. Not to mention a cleaner fish. They're not immune to attacks of parasites and may succumb to parasites as well. However, that doesn't mean you shouldn't add cleaners to your tank. It's fascinating watching them um, just clean your fish. And to be honest, it does keep the fish a little bit healthier, healthier by, you, by eating mucus and dead scales off the fish. Uh, another question. Is drip, drip acclimation necessary? <clears throat> I've done old ways of acclimation by just adding a little water to the bag over the course of an hour or so. 
and so far so good is it wrong to stick to this method well it's just personal choice with your respect to your your accumulation process i to use to use exactly the same method you know i mean the answer to the question is it will still work fine and he's why whether you use the float and bag method you describe the drip application method the entire process accumulation is to avoid shock you like creatures that you get like fish coral you're just trying to reduce the shock from when you brought them home so whether you use a floating bag and ch add little bits of water or whether you drip acclimate personally now i do drip acclimate because you can get a, a drip drip acclimate for a couple of pound so to be honest it's a lot easier in my eyes as well uh, you just set away and forget about it Some more questions. What fish can live in a salt water aquarium? Well, to be honest, any salt water fish. Um, some of my best salt water fish that I would say to start off with would be clownfish, damselfish, green chromas, cardinals, bicolor blenny, clown gobies, yellow watchmoons. It's down a personal chest. There's loads of different tangs, but any saltwater fish will live in a saltwater aquarium. How often do you change water in your saltwater tank? For me personally, it's every two weeks. You gotta keep up your regular tank maintenance with water change, regular routine on average. Changing the water in, in your aquarium like I do every two weeks, it's recommended to use a siphon and vacuum the gravel at the same time. Um, other people do it every week, so other people do it once a month, and some people run a Triton method, which never ever change water. How often does a salt water tank need to be cleaned? Like I said, this is just personal routine, it depends on your stocking level. You can clean it once a week, once every two weeks, but I would say at the very least once every month. Um, so it would just depend on obviously your setup. How much would you say it is to set up a salt water tank? Well, to be totally honest, most people would spend £500,000 on a brand new salt water setup for the necessary stuff but i would say within the first year you could triple what you spend when you started adding fish coral everything like that you could probably say we spend 500 i guarantee the next year you're going to spend an additional 1500 pound on coral and fish um, so it's a personal choice you can do budget reefs obviously so you don't spend as much What is the easiest salt water fish to take care of? I would say some of the easiest fish that I can think of uh, to start with. Um, Dotty back, firefish, tangs, damselfish, clownfish, coral beauties, but a lot of these fish will depend whether you have coral, whether the coral's safe, or you just have a salt water like fish tank. Um, the problem in this hobby is some of the most amazing fish don't really go well with coral, uh, like a lot of the angels, which is a shame, really. Um, are salt water tanks good for beginners? Uh, I would say, yeah, uh, beginners should. Should, they shouldn't get a tank smaller than 40 gallons, as in the smaller the tank is, the harder it is to maintain all your levels. The uh, bigger the tank, uh, the easier it is to maintain the levels. So starting now, even though it sounds strange, starting out in the hobby, the bigger the tank, the easier it can be. Uh, how hard is it to set up a salt water tank? Well, once everything's planned, set up, and 
running it's relatively simple and cycling can take a while but you're able to start adding fish you realize it's worth the wait and planning if you need maintaining your saltwater tank learn about the choir maintenance and services um, Mm, right. Sorry, I'm a smoke, bad habit, bad for your health, but we need to stop. How many clownfish can go in a 15 gallon tank? I would say no more than two clownfish, three at a max if we had really good um, filtration. Um, but it all depends on water volume. And your filtration. Um, obviously, I started the hobby about 25 years ago. Obviously, fresh water. And to be honest, with you, my my tanks heavily stocked, but my filtration was above and beyond. And my tanks never had any problems with um, fish losses or disease. To be honest, they didn't really do disease in my tank. It's used to basically quarantine fish and uh, add them to the tank and if you don't keep your fish and they're not stressed good water quality obviously you should have health, healthy uh, pets what's the coolest salt water fish well my personal favorite would be a harlequin tusk second i would say an emperor angel fish third would be a flame angel fish and liar tail antheus. But going back to previous questions, you know, when I said that some of the nicest fish you can't keep with your corals, there's pretty much most of them ones. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I don't have them, but I do love them. I used to have an emperor angel fish, and it was reef safe with caution, but it just started out well three, four months into it, it just started eating every coral I had. And it did actually take months to get it out, so it actually cost me a lot of money worth of coral before I actually managed to remove it. Um, so I won't make that mistake again. <clears throat> Can you convert freshwater fish tanks into salt water? Uh, I did it. Uh, you, you can't use any equipment, and to be honest, my fish salt water tank, I converted a 350 litre corn requirement. And it had two canister fillers on. Now, this is not an ideal setup for salt water, um, but with regular maintenance, I um, managed to keep my tank on canister fillers, and a lot of other people do it. And there's uh, plenty of videos on YouTube. Um, so, yeah, you can convert it quite easily. You do have to change some stuff. Um, adding the skimmers is hard. Um, obviously, if you haven't got a sump underneath, um, but you can get internal um, skimmers. Um, but like I said, the skimmers are optional. If you keep away with water maintenance, don't feed as heavy. Uh, there's, there's ways around everything. Um, and then to be honest, I got rid of my 350 litre and I actually bought a, a reef tank, a 1,000 litre a reef tank, which is 6 foot by 2 foot wide by 3 foot high. And I'm on with that process at the moment. How long do saltwater fish live for? Oh, well, like I guess say there was quite a general question. It would depend on what fish you've got. But a lot of the fish I have found are around 15 to 20 years. Um, so unlike your uh, freshwater fish where you get like uh, 100 neons and in two or three years time you're down to about 10. Uh, saltwater fish is a pet, it's like a dog. It lives just as long. Um, I think my oldest fish is my copper band, which I do like them. And to be honest, I think these five or six now, and yeah, he's still fighting fit and still eating like a hog. 
It's an interesting question, um, <clears throat> especially for me because I am an electrician. Um, how much electricity does a saltwater fish tank use? Now, me being an electrician and being pretty sad, I actually did do this working out on a 350 liter aquarium. I worked it out using 200 to 400 kilowatts per year. And to give you an idea, uh, in the UK, it's about 18 to 19 pence a kilowatt. So if you weigh that out, it'll give you an overall rough price on a three liter, 350 liter aquarium. Um, I haven't worked out my thousand liter because I didn't. Obviously a thousand liter, a lot more equipment running, a lot more heaters. I can see it being a lot higher. <clears throat> How many times a day should you feed your marine fish? Well, I would say apart from predatory species, which are obviously adapted to graze on small quantities of food throughout the day. That fact in mind, most fishes thrive when fed small portions two or three times a day. Um, I'm actually feeding my fish eight to nine times a day because uh, at the moment, I think my refugium is working too well and I'm struggling to have nitrite and phosphate um, in my tank. So I am feeding heavily to keep the nutrients just from bottoming out. Bottoming out. But I think I might have to re reduce the size of my refugium. I've actually reduced the four period on it. Um, and obviously I'm waiting for a week to test to see what the nutrients do. If that fails, then I think I probably have to uh, reduce the size of it. What size tank do clownfish need? I would say at least 20 gallons. Not to mention you'll probably need adequate filtration pumps, water supplements, reef structures, live rock, sand, and obviously food uh, specifically for them. How many clownfish can you have in a tank? That will depend on obviously the size of the tank. It's quite a hard one to add. That's answer that. How many clownfish can I put in a 10 gallon tank? Uh, I would say 10 gallon two. Um, well, you can have uh, probably one to five fish in a 10 gallon tank. What sit? Well, there's a lot of. Uh, I think I think the number one fish for uh, the aquariums uh, must be clownfish. <clears throat> this is another clownfish question. What goes well with clownfish? Uh, I would say wrasses, damselfish, tangs, dartfish, some angelfish, blenders, puffers, um, and enemies, gobies, uh, coral. Um, but be careful about what fish you add in with coral because a lot of fish um, do decide to eat coral. How many, how many corals can I place in my aquarium per gallon? I would say. You could place as many coral as you want. Depending on where you're putting colonies or frags, 10 to 20, uh, 40 frags. Um, obviously, you will need to maintain the levels as they grow. Um, so it will depend on what you actually add into the tank. Can I use gravel in a saltwater aquarium? Uh, I would not have gravel because obviously you don't know what's in it and it can obviously gravel can uh, I would think can affect water chemistry uh, depending on what type of gravel is what type what's in it uh, it's probably not impossible to have gravel but I think the problems that you might encounter wouldn't be worth the risk how 
What is the hardiest saltwater fish? Uh, well, if you look at all the videos on YouTube, it's probably the clownfish. This is probably one of the fish, fish that people start their aquariums with. And uh, to be honest, if you don't have clownfish in your aquarium, it's not a saltwater aquarium. Um, ever since, uh, you know, Um, is it? Can I put a fish from the ocean in my tank? Can I put a fish from the ocean in my tank? Uh, I would not. Uh, to be honest, most saltwater fish come from the ocean, um, but obviously you would need to quarantine and obviously you have to make sure it's like native. Um, obviously. Like I couldn't put a fish from the UK in my warm water aquarium, um, which is a lot of fish are from Hawaii, the Red Reef, uh, Australia. Um, they wouldn't mix, so I'd have to make sure actually it's compatible. Should I leave an aquarium light on overnight? No, you should turn the hour light off and you should have a four period. Um, I think mine runs between six and six. Six in the morning, six at night, and then I have my blue lights on between six and ten, and just so that I can enjoy my tank. It's a lot longer for a period than some people use, but uh, my corals are grown, the tanks are thriving, so I'm leaving it at that. Is bottled water okay for a reef tank? Uh, I would probably just say it's a hard one because um, obviously you don't know what's in the water, but I would say it's probably impractical as the amount of water bottles you'll need to actually fill your aquarium. There'd be a lot of wasted plastic. Are salt water tanks good for beginners? Um, if you look at how many people out there that actually have tanks now, salt water aquariums, the answer to that question is going to be yes, because everybody started out as a beginner. Um, and everybody, there's a lot of people out there with successful tanks. Um, just like everything, if you learn and keep up with uh, maintenance, um, you should be okay. Uh, there will be a lot of research into uh, tanks. Should I turn my fish tank filter off at night? Uh, no, your fish tank filtration should run 24 hours a day. Um, full stop. Can clownfish change gender? Yes, they can change sex if their main partner dies. Um, so if you have four females and um, the partner dies, then one of the females can um, change itself to a male. <clears throat> Do clownfish need to be in pairs? Uh, don't have to be, but I would say it's probably more successful to be keeping them in pairs, I would say. If you try and maintain fish's behaviour in the wild, they do pair up, um, it'd probably be better for them. Will clownfish breed in my tank? Is clownfish number one fish in a saltwater aquarium? Yes, clownfish will breed in your tank um, if, if it's right, the setting's right, and um, there isn't other fish to bother them too much. Um, if they're, they're happy, they will breed. Are bare bottom tanks better? Now, this is a hard one for me because it is better, but I had six months of hell trying to do a bare bottom, and to be honest, impatience got the best of me because the ugly stage on a bare bottom tank is much longer than. Um, 
if you put like sand in the bottom. Uh, so after six months, I just got sick of everything appearing in my tank one after each other. So I did actually put sand in, you know what, within, uh, within a week, um, my tank just changed just like that. Um, that one was a better uh, sand in the bottom of your tank, I was immature very quickly. Um, I'm not saying at some point I might not remove my sand slowly over time to get to a bare bottom. Um, I might just remove bits at a time. Um, I haven't decided yet. What's the best start of saltwater fish? I would go with the dotty rack because uh, they're beautiful. And um, if it's a small tank, they're a small fish. They'll just thrive and they're always swimming around in a tank and they do look stunning. What is salt creep? Salt creep occurs when water in saltwater aquarium splashes out of the tank, gets things wet, and after the fresh proportion of water evaporates, it leaves behind crystallized salt. Um, so that's why you get like salt creep on certain parts where it's wet and then dries or it's been splashed. What's a good size salt water tank for a beginner? I would just say a 40 breeder, probably be the best. Why are salt water tanks so expensive? Marine aquariums are, however, the investment in the money and time, the more equipment is needed from marine soap, it's significantly pricier. Uh, you, you can go if you want to into hundreds of thousands of pounds um, for a salt water aquarium where you can do it a lot cheaper. In this hobby you can go as expensive as you want or as cheap as you want. Does blue light cause algae in a saltwater tank? Uh, supposedly blue LEDs don't grow algae. Um, they do need the blue and the red spectrum. Um, so if you do run your blue lights to start off with the aquarium, it does actually help rather than putting your whites on. As soon as you put the whites on, um, which has the red in included, um, the algae starts appearing if your tank's not mature. Can I go on holiday and leave my aquarium for two weeks? Um, healthy adult fish could probably go a week or two without feeding. However, young fish, they haven't got the fat stores, so you would need to keep feeding them, but I would still not leave my fish for a week or two without feeding them. Um, I would ask somebody to come over and I would partition the food into little containers because it's renowned for people you ask to feed your tank after you leave to put too much food in and you come back and all sorts of empty tank and a lot of things are dead. Jesus. Can I use table salt instead of aquarium salt? Uh, there's a big difference between table salt and aquarium salt. Table salt is obviously treated with chemicals such as iodine and the cake and agents contains like toxins even at low levels but it has it so a table of salt is probably very very harmful to your fish so i would never ever put table salt in the aquarium what eats algae off rocks uh blennies herbivores uh, tangs i have a lot of tangs in my tank and you just see them all day just growing around grazing like cows in the field um, tangs are probably the better option because uh, they do grow bigger and obviously need more algae so it depends on the size of your aquarium do solar water tanks need heaters yes um, it's the only way to obviously maintain them unless you keep your house at a certain temperature in the water obviously uh, gets it, but obviously that's probably impossible.
does sponge filter clean fish poop uh, it will remove some of the bigger pieces but then the problem you got is it will start diluting into the water it's actually a uh, bacteria and the process that will actually uh, start eating away it and convert it to nitrate nitrate um, and then obviously you'll be taking out what is barifugium or carbon dose and or whatever method you're using what's the best temperature for a salt water tank uh, between 75 and 77 degrees warm toilet that's my personal preference can I turn off an aquarium heater at night no should be running 24 hours a day because obviously once you say it, it'll just maintain that temperature it wouldn't be on constantly anyway <laughs> do fish like to be petted uh, don't think you should be petting your fish but I do have a Nassau tank now every time I put my hand in comes up and um, interacts with me um, like a lot of fish do um, but just be cautious obviously they do have a slime coat and obviously if you damage it it can be prone to parasites infections um, so just be careful can you use just a sponge filter in a salt water aquarium I suppose you could for two weeks and then after that you, you everything will be dead um, so I would definitely say you need a lot more filtration um, than just a sponge filter in a salt water aquarium How hot is too hot for my roof tank? Uh, I would say anywhere between 76 and 82, below 76 to go below 82. It's too hot, but obviously you try, whatever you say to, we should try and maintain that constantly. Uh, do air stones add oxygen to the water? No. It's the bubbles break and the bubbles break in the surface which will add oxygen so when you put an air stone in your tank it looks like there's a lot of oxygen going into your tank but there isn't as much as what it actually looks it's the surface agitation um, which will add air and to be honest one of the best ways to add air to your tank is obviously a skimmer can fish sleep with the light on um, you shouldn't have your light on overnight anyway, but um, I don't know whether fish do sleep. Um, they just sort of like just disappear and just sit there, but uh, it's just like it depends what you determine as in their sleep. You don't actually see them lying down with their eyes closed. I might have to have a look at that one because, to be honest, I don't know that question. Um, Another question, do fishes sleep? Uh, and as you don't know that question, I know they just sit and rest at the bottom of the tank and you can class that as sleeping or resting. Um, a lot of them will hide in uh, crevices in the rocks. Uh, my fish, which I was called Dory by the kids, hides in like really tight crevices in my tank. And how he gets in there is amazing. I think they'll do it in the wild, obviously, with protection. What's the best alligator for my saltwater aquarium? Uh, tanks. Um, the most algae, and I would say probably number one fish in my tank is an alligator. Even though my tanks is actually my fox face rabbit fish. That eats more than all the tangles put together. It's just like a, it's like a cow walking around your rock work. You know I mean, it's just like whether it was just greedy or what, but 
I always seems to be at the rocks. So I would say definitely had the fox face rabbit fish. <clears throat> Do fishes fat? <laughs> uh, that's a. <laughs> to be honest, I would not. I would not know the answer to that one. Um, yeah, I honestly, don't know that one. Do fishes pay? Well, I would say yes, because obviously when you put your fish in your tank, you do get a lot of ammonia, um, which obviously come up from the gills and obviously from peeing. Um, so you will get a lot of ammonia, so it's obviously from peeing and obviously uh, coming from the gills. Do I need a special tank for saltwater fish? Uh, not really. Aquariums, aquarium, it's probably... Uh, easier with a saltwater aquarium um because obviously they're adapted for sumps and it's a lot easier to work a sump because a lot of the equipment goes in your sump um but you still can have uh, saltwater aquariums on um canister filters probably it's just a lot harder for your equipment because then you're gonna have a lot of equipment in the tank and it won't look as nice This one's a good one actually. Why are saltwater fish so expensive? I would say it's often down to the availability of the fish that sets the price. Like most things in life, if it's rare, it's expensive. By the rare, if fish may not be rare in the wild, but the rare in the home aquariums and obviously the rare in pet shops because they're difficult to catch in the wild. There's a lot of places actually banning um, the export of fish. Uh, like tangs used to be about 20 30 pounds now they're about 150 200 pounds a tang obviously because they're becoming rarer because obviously they're not going to let people transport them um, but a lot of people are doing wonders um with breeding tangs at the moment Can you have too much coral? Uh, to be honest, you can pack your tank full of coral, but it's the drainage of obviously calcium, alkalinity and stuff, nutrients that's going to be uh, and space. A lot of corals will fight. So it's all down to space, nutrients, and obviously corals will grow big and uh, depending on what corals you got and they reproduce quite fast actually and um, a lot of corals <coughs> do fish like blue light at night To be honest, you shouldn't keep any light on uh, in your tank, um, although with exceptions. I do have moonlight on uh, my icons. They do do a moon phase, and I find that running the moon phase, um, so your lights are very, very, very dim. Um, it just stops fish jumping at night, um, you know, when you actually um, come down and want your fishes on the floor. Although you should have like uh, something on the top, um, it does stop fish jumping. Um, but you shouldn't run any light on a night. Normally, the blue lights is uh, to aid coral growth. And I personally use blue light on a night because uh, coral tanks under blue light is just look amazing. Um, so you see, when you're sat in your living room and you see your tank and all the blues and all its glories, uh, look really nice. How much does a 10 gallon saltwater tank cost? It's just a small tank, is it? 10, 20 pound? 
it's equipment and everything that you're going to put inside that's going to cost you more money. How do you show your fish you love them? Uh, in my eyes, is maintain them to be as healthy as possible. Um, because if you truly do love something, you know what I mean? Obviously, you wouldn't want bad for it. So, uh, if there is an answer to that question, I would probably say, yeah, keeping your fish in the best water you can and as healthy as you can. Um, I will add another question here. Is, uh, Quite remarkable one is if you do keep a marine aquarium, a saltwater aquarium, you're not actually keeping coral and fish. What you're actually doing is you're keeping water. So you think that you're having coral and fish in your tank, you're not, you're actually uh, maintaining water, your coral and your fish just live in it. So you're actually keeping. Uh, a square box of water and obviously adjusting parameters keeping them right and, and stuff like that uh, so basically I'd say a salt water aquarium is actually water management <laughs> um, obviously when you actually maintain that obviously you can just add coral fish I don't know if a few of these questions are just jokes or like people are generally interested how do fish cry? Uh, I would doubt very much that fish engage in anything like crying. Um, for one, uh, you wouldn't see the tears, and to be honest, I don't know 100% the answer, but I would think that they don't have the uh, capabilities like uh, we do. Is sand really fish poo? No. How many corals should I start with? Uh, I would just start with a couple. Um, make sure all your water problems are right. Worst thing you can do is uh, set your tank up, and fill it full of coral, which is going to cost you a fortune, and within a week, your water problems dive or you haven't maintained anything. Um, so we'll just start one or two um, easier corals. See how you maintain your water. This is what we do as uh, saltwater reefers. We maintain water, and obviously if you maintain it and your parameters stay okay, then, but then you obviously start adding more corals, but I wouldn't go out and fill a tank um, to start off with. Uh, I think... Uh, and do fish like to be touched? Some fish do come to the surface, you mean, like uh, my Nassau tank. When I did have an outbreak of uh, ick white spots, it was really bad. And when I put my hand in my tank, it used to come up and swim to my hand and sit in my hand, like as if he was asking for help. And to be honest, uh, I got him when he was about this big, and now he's about this big. Uh, if he'd have died, uh, I pretty much would have been devastated, but it was that bad. It was like literally close to death. Um, I didn't manage to pull him around and he is swimming. Um, but yeah, so I'd say some people, uh, some fish and people um, do like that interaction because uh, every time I feed him, he's coming up and he will sit and nudge my hand because he knows I'm going to be putting food in, in the tank. And he's like nudging my hands in and get out of the way and pass me the food. So some fish do in interact more than others. A lot of people think they just swim backwards and forwards, but uh, some fish do interact. Easiest coral to keep. Star polyps, leather corals, bubble corals, trumpet corals, brain corals, probably a lot of soft corals. Um, Medium to keep would be a lot of uh, LPS, and then obviously hard to keep SPS. But most people, when they get into corals, do start on uh, soft corals. 
Especially Zoos. Zoos um, Zoos for your money. Give amazing colour. Um grow quite fast a lot of them. And uh, good for you, good for you, Dank. Do my fish recognise me as their owner? I would say on that instance, I don't know how this happens, but I would say yes. Because if I'm in the living room where my aquarium is, if my son gets up or my wife gets up to leave the room and comes back in, the fish just carry on swimming backwards and forwards. If I stand up and walk into the kitchen and come back in, they're all in the feeding spot. And so I don't know whether we're watching the fish or the fish are actually watching us. Um, but they do seem to know. Um, I did speak to somebody and they said that I can actually tell by the vibrations from the way you walk as well um, and approach the tank. Uh, so a lot of fish do recognize you or do recognize uh, the way you like walk with your vibrations. Um, because my fish, as soon as I stand up and go and come back, they'll be expecting food. Even though I'm not feeding them all the time, they're, they're always in the corner. Can fish hear you talk? Yeah, I would say they can They can hear and sense they have a, obviously a line that goes along the sides of them that they pick up vibrations. And obviously, exactly like how our ears work, obviously pick up vibrations and obviously translate it into uh, sound. Um, so yeah, just exactly the same. Does tapping on the glass hurt fish? Yes. Um, Imagine being in a tank, a big um, echo chamber, and you're sat in it, and then somebody comes up and starts banging. Obviously, it'll magnify the sound inside the tank. So, although the fish maybe is just swimming hide or carry on, um, and as you can't see it being very good for them, to be honest. How would you know if your fish are happy? Swimming backwards and forward, um, eating, not looking lethargic, not hiding, uh, fins and body and everything's in good health, the eyes are in good health. Um, I think it, I think even a novice can actually see when a fish is not well, um, just by its behaviour and um, the way it acts. And, yeah, I think, I think even a novice can tell once it gets a healthy fish and then it sort of changes its behaviour, you, you can pick it up even without being an experienced uh, aquarist. How do you tell if a fish is sad? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't know that one. <clears throat> I could understand if they're not being sad, but I was going to understand if they've got issues, if they're like flying over the tank, crashing the bottom rubbing itself, graveling, rubbing on itself on rocks, um, flicking its fins, um, just acting um, not normal, um, anything like that, will uh, affect your fish. I've got another question here. Can you get fish high? And I'm not even going to answer that. Uh, if if you if, i'm sorry but if you're posting that question you're one you're either just taking the mickey or two you should not even be keeping fish um or any pets for that matter yeah i mean because uh yeah just wrong on so many levels anyway i've answered as many as i can so um hope you find a few of the questions um good if not Hit one in the comments. I'll try and answer some more later on.